Jesus is putting his disciples through some pretty severe experiences as he teaches them to have confidence in him and prepares them for the ministry that they will have to establish his kingdom on the earth. He'd been teaching them about the kingdom of God, the mustard seed, which would grow up to fill the whole earth so that even the birds nested in its branches. The sower who would go out into the whole world with the word of God and that word would produce fruit. It would grow secretly and having taught the disciples and the people that day, he had said, let us go over to the other side of the sea. He'd gone to sleep and a huge storm came. They panicked and woke him up. He calmed the sea, but he reprimanded them. Why were they fearful? Then they came to the other side of the sea, to the country of the Gadarenes. And when he had come out of the boat, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit who had his dwelling among the tombs and no one could bind him, not even with chains because he had often been bound with shackles and chains and the chains had been pulled apart by him and the shackles broken in pieces. Neither could anyone tame him and always, day and night, He was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying out and cutting himself with stones. When he saw Jesus from afar, he ran and worshipped him. And he cried out with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with you, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I implore you by God that you do not torment me. For he said to him, Come out of the man, unclean spirit. Then he asked him, What is your name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. Also he begged him earnestly that he would not send them out of the country. Now a large herd of swine was feeding there near the mountains. So all the demons begged him, saying, Send us to the swine, that we may enter them. And at once Jesus gave them permission. Then the unclean spirits went out and entered the swine. There were about two thousand, and they ran violently down the steep place into the sea and drowned in the sea. So those who fed the swine fled, and they told it in the city and in the country, and they went out to see what it was that had happened. Then they came to Jesus and saw the one who had been demon-possessed and had the legion sitting and clothed and in his right mind. And they were afraid. And those who saw it told them how it happened to him who had been demon-possessed and about the swine. Then they began to plead with him to depart from their region. And when he got into the boat, he who had been demon-possessed begged him that he might be with him. However, Jesus did not permit him, but said to him, Go home to your friends, and tell them what great things the Lord has done for you, and how he has had compassion on you. And he departed, and began to proclaim in Decapolis all that Jesus had done for him. And all marvelled. My name's Arthur, and I thank you for joining me as we share this further experience of the disciples. From Mark chapter 5 verses 1 to 20. They are there witnessing a most extraordinary event. They come over the sea, they are there for an hour or so before the people send them away again and Jesus leaves. But not before he has impacted the life of just one person. He'd travelled over the sea, they'd faced that storm, just to make contact with one person. But this person was in serious trouble. He was what we would call a madman. His behaviour was irrational. And the explanation that is given is that he has many evil spirits. These are making him cut himself, self-harm. They are making him call out, yelling and screaming and 
people are scared of him. He lives among the tombs, he's not properly clothed, he's not in his right mind. And people have attempted to restrain him, to chain him, to control him, but he just bashes it and bashes it and bashes it until it's broken in pieces. People have tried to reason with him and talk with him, but no one can tame him. But when Jesus comes, this man immediately runs to Jesus. He recognises him from a distance and comes and worships him, that is, falls down on the ground before him. Why does he run to Jesus? There is a battle going on in his life between what he wants and the evil spirits that he is allowed to take control. And he can't free himself from them. But when he sees Jesus, he comes, and yet the words that come out of his mouth are the words of the demons. What have I to do with you, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I implore you by God that you do not torment me. When we see somebody, we see their body, their clothing, the outward appearance. But when a spirit sees somebody, he recognises the spirit that is in them. And these demons recognise Jesus straight away as the Son of God, the man who is God. No doubt there was a longer conversation than what we have recorded. Jesus had said to the man, Come out of him, unclean spirit. And there's then a dialogue Who is this unclean spirit? Normally, Jesus has not engaged in dialogue with unclean spirits. He has commanded them to come out and not to make him known. But on this occasion, there is just the man and the disciples. The crowd hasn't yet come. The locals are at some distance looking after some pigs. And the evil spirit says, Well, it's not just one of us. There's many of us. This man has many pressures fighting for control in his life. And they beg that they not be sent out of the country, but sent into the swine. Well, I'm not quite sure why they thought it would be nice for them to be in the swine, because the swine obviously reacted very negatively to these unclean spirits. When they come into the swine... The swine immediately panic as a herd run down into the sea and are drowned. And what happened to the unclean spirits after that? This was a very dramatic scene. A huge financial loss to the owners of the pigs. And those who are caring for the pigs immediately run back to the town and blame Jesus for the loss of the pigs. So the town people come out. And what they observe is that this man that they had not been able to contain is sitting clothed in his right mind at the feet of Jesus. They're afraid. They don't understand what's going on. How could Jesus calm this man whom they have never calmed? If they were scared of this man and this man is submitting to Jesus, then they have every reason to be scared of Jesus as well. What will he do if he's more powerful than this man? And so they plead, go away. We don't want you here. And so Jesus meekly gets back into the boat. But the man who'd been healed begs, let me go with you. I want to stay with you. And Jesus says, no. You go home to your friends. Tell them, what great things the Lord has done for you and how he has had compassion on you. And so he is able to speak with those who knew him. Particularly, it would have been those whose lives were in distress. His testimony changes the hearts of the people throughout the whole territory. It's a, an example of the mustard seed that grows. It is a picture of how the gospel can come in a very small way and just to impact one person in a community. But that testimony then grows. All marvelled.